and welcome guys hello hello i'm your host tonight dj michael chilson we're going to talk about dmx lighting i am keeping an eye on the chat here so if you guys can give me a heads up let me know you can hear me well um we're good all right we got a thumbs up from mj welcome guys all right so we're gonna dive right on into it here tonight we and got lots welcome of guys Ooh, hello okay, hello yeah. we got audio coming i'm your back host tonight here. dj all right so there we go we got good audio got a leap of feedback coming from youtube so we're good all right so on we go onward and upward so tonight we're going to talk about uh, lighting, software, hardware, interfaces, how it all connects together, a little bit about DMX for those who are new to DMX. I'm going to show you the, the rig that I'm running that's sitting back there in the briefcase, um, along with the lighting software integration um, and some really cool stuff. So we're going to get right on into it here. So first up, I've got a little PowerPoint here where it's, it's a little rudimentary, but stick with me. We'll get through it to the software where all the good bits are. But uh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with DMX, uh, this will give you a great introductory, a great introductory course on how DMX works and how everything gets hooked together. So let's jump right on into it there. So first thing we're doing, we're going to talk about is what options you have available for you in DMX lighting. So you have software, a Wi-Fi or IR remote, wireless DMX, a hardware interface such as a lighting console controller, hardware software integration, or MIDI hardware software integration. So we're going to cover a little bit of all of these topics as we go along here. So just stick with me and we'll uh, continue on to some better stuff. So how DMX works? Think of it as uh, mail coming to your house. The post office addresses um, your house with a specific number. And in order to get your mail, the mail comes to your particular number. To your to your address DMX lighting works very much the same way so when you want a light to do something you index that number and give it a command so you use your lighting controller or laptop and your lights are individually numbered and the DMX signaling knows to go to that particular light to give it to the command to give it the command to turn on or off now, the caveat to that is we can have lights with identical numbers, whereas the post office, everybody's house has an individual address or a unique address, DMX lighting doesn't necessarily have to work in the same way. So we have our lighting controller, and we can have lights numbered one and a light number two, which is off. You can duplicate light number one as many times as you would like, and as well, light number two. So in this instance, when you send a command to light number one, any light with address, with any light with the address that you've programmed into light number one will do whatever light number one is told to do. As well as the same goes for light number two. When light number two is addressed, when you have more than one light addressed the same, those lights perform together. Now the caveat to that is, is you can mix and match this setup. So you can have multiple lights with the same address on the same chain as lights with independent addresses. Pretty cool. So how Wired DMX works is we can do 512 channels of DMX control per one universe. And up to 32 fixtures can be on a cable run. So if you look at it as universe one would be from DMX channels one to 512. Universe two would be 513 to 1024. Universe three would be 1025 to 1536. Universe 4 would be 1537 to 2049, and so on. So the way this works is you can do your 512 channels, and the reason you would use an, an optical splitter, or a splitter in this case, would be for ease of wiring. So let's say you have 
uh, a bunch of fixtures on one side of the stage, another set of fixtures on the other side of the stage, a bunch of fixtures behind the stage, and a bunch of fixtures out behind the audience in the room. A splitter allows you to cable to those runs independently without having to make a big loop and come back makes it really well makes it really nice so like this setup here we go one channel goes to the first group of lights the second goes to the second group of lights the third to the third the fourth to the fourth and so on however the caveat to this is because you're only feeding one universe into the splitter the max number of channels available to all of the lights on the splitter are 512 channels and again you can only do 32 32 fixtures or 32 lights per cable run so if you do if you have a bunch of fixtures that have a high can channel count you're going to need um, to control the lights in a different, um, you're going to need more universes, more DMX universes to control the lights. So, the way you figure this out is the number of channels per fixture times the number of fixtures cannot exceed 512. So, look at the channels, uh, the channel setups on your lighting fixtures and then add those channel setups together by how many lights you have and that'll tell you how many channels you're going to need in order to accommodate your particular lighting rig and if it exceeds 512 channels now you need to look at a second universe for your lighting now the other reason um now you might be saying michael whoa 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 man 512 channels is a ton i'll never exceed that what would i need that many channels for or what would i need more universes for well, we're going to answer that question. This, for instance, is the Blizzard Lighting Blockhead. I believe that's actually the Blockhead 2. Now, this unit, in the highest setup that it carries, um, in which it has multiple modes, multiple different ways to configure the lighting, um, at the most it can use is seven or 117 DMX channels. Now what those 117 DMX channels get you is a heck of a lot of control. Um, so it's a 5x5 five five LED matrix and in, within that 117 DMX channels I can individually control each one of those dots on that, on that unit, on each one of those pixels. Uh, that would be referred to as a pixel and it's got red, green, blue, and white LEDs in each one of those circles there on the front of that unit. Um, so within that unit, I can write text, I can write code, I can write letters, I can write symbols, I can do a lot of really cool stuff um, along with infinite pan, infinite tilt. I mean, the list is there. It goes on and on. It's an amazing fixture. If you've never checked out the blockhead, it's awesome. Um, but if you look at that, at 117 DMX channels and four fixtures, that's 468 DMX channels just for those four lights, not counting anything else that you have in your lighting rig. So you might need ease of cabling would be another reason why you would need more universes. You need more channels like we just discussed or you want to do lighting zones. It's another great way to control lighting and group things together to make it easy to, to, uh, to figure out while programming. So how IR DMX works is we're going to talk about, um, we're going to look at, so you have your, your lights that you want to control and you have an IR remote that comes with those lights. Uh, these are uh, Chave at the moment that I'm showing you, but I believe American DJ also has a set of lights that uh, they use uh, IR with. And uh, I'm bouncing back and forth here, so just give me a second. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat as we're going along. So in this particular instance, you program each light individually with IR, which is infrared signal, um, and it, you manually set each light. Now this is great for uh, solid up lighting and some lighting effects. Um, I believe like the um, the little DJ effects units that Chave just recently came out with um, that have multiple effects on a single T-bar. Um, it would work good for those for little instances or little shows. Um, it's more of a set and forget approach to lighting. It's not a lot of control. 
and there's not a lot of um, flexibility with that system. It's kind of they're on, you can set the color, and they're, you leave them alone for the rest of the night. So Computerless DMX is the next new setup, and it uses a mobile app. So again, we have our uh, lighting, and we have, uh, this is the FlareCon from Chave, but I believe American DJ also has a unit similar to this, and it functions very much the same. And we have our mobile phones running an app, a mobile phone app. The phones connect to the, the FlareCon via a Wi-Fi network that the FlareCon produces. So it's a Wi-Fi network in that unit. That unit's also capable of connecting to the lighting via the DeFi wireless DMX, which is specific to Chave. I believe American DJ's unit also is specific to their um, wireless. And, and you can also cable it. So you can cable to your lighting in your rig and your lighting around the room and control them. Now, again, this is specific to the manufacturer's wireless DMX signal. So if you're using a Chave, the Chave FlareCon that I'm showing here, you need to use Chave wireless DMX lighting. Um, uh, it's great for up lighting and wash color lighting control, but not good for programming shows or controlling moving head fixtures, and it's got limited color and control options. So it's a great entry level control system for up lighting, not so good for programming real large light shows. So we're going to talk about now how wire the, or wired software uh, DMX works. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to throw them up there in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on it. I'll try to answer your questions, or we can go back and look at something if I'm going through this too fast. Um, I'm trying to get done here in an hour. I don't want to keep you guys up. I know the West Coast is, or East Coast is it's 10 o'clock there. Um, I'm in mountain time, so it's not terribly late for me. But uh, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying this, and we're going to keep on going here as long as you guys don't have any questions. Uh, did we lock up? What's going on? Are we doing okay? Yeah, refresh. There we go. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, uh, so in this, so we take our lighting laptop and a USB MIDI controller. Uh, we're gonna discuss the controllers here in a little bit. And then we send our signal uh, from the laptop out to a USB DMX dongle, and then we control our lights. Now, we can only control as many universes as the USB dongle can support. Um, with Show Express, that would be one, one dongle, one uh, universe. Um, some of the other uh, manufacturers can carry three, four, five, up to you know six DMX universes. It kind of all depends on the dongle or the interface that you have, um, and that's manufacturer specific. Um, so console lighting works a little bit different. It doesn't have the computer. So you have a control surface. In this case, this is the Chave Obey 70. And that sends out our DMX signal directly to the lights. And you use the sliders and, and controls on that Obey 70 to run your lighting. Now, the reason we use a terminator is that tells the software that that's the end of the line or the last fixture in that line. Um, it's got a little resistor in there that resists the signal, and it helps to resist feedback on that cable. Um, now, I've heard a lot of guys talk about mic cables, DMX cables, will they work, won't they work? The truth of the answer is, yes, they'll work. But they will only work for short runs or short distances, and they're not recommended. So user beware, if you're using a mic cable for a DMX cord, you could potentially at some point run into issues with it because you get uh, frequency, what they call frequency talkback. 
So when you run multiple cables in a bundle together, you get interference between the cables. As the signals are being transmitted down that cable, the interference jumps from one cable to the other and creates what they refer to as talkback. The reason why DMX cables are so important are because the way the cable is put together and built, and I know John Young and uh, Ben Stowe have talked endlessly about this, and we're going to just cover it briefly. Um, the the spiraling in the cabling of a DMX cable is a tighter spiral, which allows for less interference of that talk back into the cable. So that is why DMX cables are so much more important to use for lighting than using mic cables. However, again, mic cables will work. Are they recommended? No. Are they cheaper? Yes. So you can, you know, Take it with a grain of salt, you know, price over quality and price over performance. So that's how uh, we're going to talk about that and just re we'll leave it at that. So now we're going to talk about ArtNet DMX, which is another version of DMX. So we can take our lighting laptop and we set the IP address of that lighting laptop and then we take our ArtNet dongle and a crossover network cord. Now the crossover network cord is very important in this particular instance because it allows the lighting laptop to talk to the network adapter in that dongle efficiently and it's a cable that can be used uh, a crossover network cord can also be used to let two computers talk back and forth to each other without a router uh, that's an important tidbit of information to remember in this particular instance you need that crossover cord um, and what that does is it switches two of the pins it switches those cables around so it allows the signal from the computer and that interface to talk back and forth to each other um, on that network cable without that you don't get any signal flow um, so just keep that in mind if you're going to go artnet without any kind of router or switch or anything any other hardware in between the computer and your artnet dongle your artnet device you need that crossover network cable and then again that network or that artnet uh, controller controls our lighting so now this is a little bit similar to the lighting setup that I currently use where I have an, a lighting laptop connected to a router either via cable or wirelessly on Wi-Fi and then the router talks to the ArtNet and then you control your lighting. Now the advantage of this are um, a lot of the aftermarket ArtNet controllers are multiple universe ArtNet controllers so you can get a lot more bang for your buck and you get a lot more expandability for future um, expansion with having multiple universes ready to go when you're ready for them. Um, and then this instance, we're going to talk about the wireless ArtNet and wireless DMX. So again, we're going to look at our laptop and our Wi-Fi to the router. And then we cable to our ArtNet device and then we wireless DMX, so we have a wireless DMX transmitter that goes out to our first string of lights, then to a second string of lights, and then when we're ready, we can add a secondary ArtNet unit, because our router's got multiple ports on it, and another wireless DMX grouping of lights. So now, in order for this to work efficiently, and to, to work um, correctly, your ArtNet um, units need to be on separate IP addresses, and your wireless DMX units, the transmitters and receivers, need to be on separate channels. So you can only carry 512 DMX channels per wireless DMX channel. So I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. Um, the units that I use have seven channels, so my DMX transmitter and my receivers can be set to control, be controlled for seven channels. I can have seven channels of transmit, seven channels of receive. Now with multiple transmitters, I can have any grouping of channels or any grouping of fixtures 
um, be on those channels. So, um, I hope you guys understand that. And, and if you have questions, you'll be fr feel free to, to ask them in the chat, and, and I can answer them as best as I can. I hope that makes sense. So you would have a, a grouping. The top um, two, two runs of lights there would be channel group A, and the bottom one there would be channel group B. So that's how the two wireless signals don't get confused and don't send commands to lights they're not supposed to. So that's pretty much a basic of that. Now, we're going to talk about software and hardware integration. So we're going to look at the sound switch, which is Serato's new interface. So we use Serato DJ software. If you're a Serato user, this is a great new product for you. And then you can use a DJ controller. Um, in this instance, we're looking at the, Den the brand new Denon MC8000, um, and the reason this works with this is because the new Denon MC8000 has a USB hub built into it. So this is how that's this is working, and the sound switch hardware. So what we get is we get you connect sound switch to your DJ software, you program your lights to react to the songs in Serato. And then that sends the signal to sound switch, and then sound switch interprets that and sends it to your lights. Or, in this instance, we can use the USB cable to our Denon, and then sound switch the USB cable to the Denon, in which case the Denon becomes a USB hub, and then we DMX out to our lights. This is for Serato DJ software only. Again, this is for Serato. The other, um, now, there are some caveats to this. Uh, some of the software we're gonna look at also has this capability. So again, we use the crossover cable and I can connect my DJing laptop to my lighting laptop and send lighting code or lighting commands from the, the lighting software from the DJ software to the lighting software and then a MIDI controller can also control the lighting software and then we can send that out to our USB dongle and then to our wireless DMX. The other way to do this is to do the DJ laptop to a router to the lighting laptop either cabled or wireless and then our MIDI controller again on the lighting laptop and then our USB DMX interface or you can go an ArtNet DMX interface or ArtNet uh, DMX interface and then out to your lighting. So there's lots of great options here and we're actually going to show you a demo of this using Freestyler um, and QLC, which is the software I currently use for my lighting rig, um, is in development. I've been talking with the developer. I was hoping to get some information from him about this and, and get a uh, handle on that plugin. Um, now, these are developed for freestyle or for virtual DJ. So, if you're a virtual DJ user, you can actually do the same thing that the SoundSwitch software is doing um, with Virtual DJ and Freestyler, and hopefully soon, uh, QLC Plus also is going to have that ability where you can send lighting command code from your DJ software in the song to your lighting control system and then out to your lighting. Now, why would I do that? Well, you do that because when you program your song, every time you play that song, as long as the system is set up and plugged in the same way, your lighting will always be the same. On point, on beat, on cue, whatever you want to call it, when you have mood changes in the song, when you have beat changes, things happen on beat, on cue. It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. So I think that ends our slideshow. So we'll come back in here, and we'll come here. So we're back on the screen. Let me just make sure that we're good on the thing.
The video looks good. It is QLC. QLC Plus. All right. So this is... Uh, and I've got I've got a lot of stuff going on here guys. We're going to be switching back and forth between cameras and I've got multiple computers running um, So first let's go back and look at um, We'll go back to my rig what I use So let me switch back here to big screen So I use that last setup. I have a router and an artnet um, interface in this case, and when I go to a, a show, that router is sending out a wireless signal that both my DJ laptop and my lighting laptop are connecting to, and then that allows me to send the trans or the transmit the uh, the signal. So down here, there you go. You can see it. It's an it's an older Linksys uh, G router. It's nothing fancy. Uh, I believe it's a WRT54. It doesn't have to be a fancy router. You're not sending massive amounts of data. You're not streaming videos. So you can get on Craigslist and find these routers for 30, 40, 50 bucks. They're really cheap. Um, and then the ArtNet unit that I'm running, I'm running, it's built into this case here. Um, it's in a custom enclosure that I built. Uh, it is a six, six universe ArtNet controller. Now that gives me the ability to have six DMX universes down the road. Currently I'm only using one. It's not, um, it's a little bit of overkill for what I really need, but I've got the expansion there for it when I'm ready for it. And I also have a USB or a DMX wireless or transmitter in there. And then my lights that I mount up onto my trussing have the receivers, the lights that are actually mounted in, a couple of pieces of truss that don't get unmounted when I pack them up to leave, actually have the transmitter in already. And the lights on my T-bars already have the transmitters already hired or hardwired in to the rig. So basically all I do is come in, set up tripods, put the T-bar on top and put power to it and I don't have to do anything else. There's no other cabling required in order to make that system work. I plug this in, fire it up, connect the software, or connect the laptops to the, to the router, turn everything on, power up the lighting software and away I go. Very simple, very easy, very unique software. So. In here, this is Virtual DJ. We're looking at it here. I'm going to show you guys the sound editor. And as you can see right here, I have light red, light orange, green, pink, blue. Those are all cue points within that song. And as you can see up there in the orange um, sound bar, that little green bar is bouncing around to the, each of the different cue points. Now, as I play the song, those cue points trigger those cue points trigger Freestyler. So we're going to go over here to the to the lighting laptop. Now I'm using a KVM. That's why I'm switching. That's how I can switch back and forth without switching screens. It's because I'm using a KVM. Um, I don't have enough screen capturing capacity to capture both laptops at the same time, so I have to use a KVM to switch them. Little side note there. So, on this screen, this would be referred, this is what I use as my uplighting. So this is Freestyler, this is all of my uplights that I would currently run at a show. Um, now, the way I program is I program as if I'm setting up my largest light rig. The, whatever the biggest rig is I can put up, that's the way I program my light shows. And then from there, if I reduce the show when I set it up, everything is still programmed as if it was the bigger show. So everything still functions, the commands are still being sent even though the light's not there to receive them. And that, you know, is the basics of the how DMX works, it sends the signal. The light doesn't necessarily need to be there for the signal to be received. Well, it does if you need the light, if you want that light to work. It, the light has to be there and the signal has to be sent. But the signal can be sent and the light doesn't need to be there and nothing that will not affect anything. 
And this is an example of what my light show looks like. So I've got two trusses that would be over the DJ booth, or two stands over the DJ booth with trussing and some little moving heads up on top of that. And then two T-bars off to either side with some additional lighting. And this is the biggest show. This would be for like a school dance or something, you know, real big show where um, I'm going for just lots of beams of light, lots of stuff going on. Not necessarily something elegant and, and clean, but just a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we're going to go back to the uplight. And so we've got override buttons progr programmed in to Freestyler here. Now the commands that I'm sending from Virtual DJ are controlling these buttons. And so we're going to look at how that works. Now this, oh, let's go back here. So this is a APC Mini. This is a USB MIDI controller. Um, a lot of DJs or a lot of guys use this to make music, to re reprogram music. And the flicker you see there is not actually flickering. Um, it's the f frequency rate of the LEDs and the camera. Um, everything is actually solid on right now. Um, now what you do with this is I can program these buttons to react to my lighting software. So now I've got an inexpensive hardware interface that controls my lighting software. And I don't have Freestyler programmed with this. I quit using it um, because of some limitations with it that we'll discuss here in a few minutes. But we will sh I will show you this with my other lighting software that I'm actually using, which is very cool. And it sh will show you a lot of neat stuff. But, so we're going to start playing the song here. We're going to play a song from uh, Virtual DJ on that computer, and you should hear it come through. Uh, give me just a second. Points of interest editor. I use a six... This is a really good light. Yeah, Ian, uh, the the lights that I have um, are equivalent to the show or to the Chave Mini Spots. Um, they're 15 watts. They're okay. They're an okay light. Um, to be honest, if you were looking to do weddings with these, they're a little underpowered. You're going to lose them across the room in a bright room. Um, but they're great little fill light. They're relatively inexpensive. I think I got them for around 100 bucks a piece. They're not real terribly expensive. You can find them on eBay or Amazon. Um, again, if you're going to get a moving head fixture, I would suggest getting something a little bit brighter, something a little bit more professional. Um, but I wanted some moving heads to get me into the entry level. But So let's get back to this. So we're going to play a, a song here. Uh, hopefully we don't get kicked for copyright infringement from YouTube. Um, but it is uh, from American Horror Story. It's the theme song or the opening song from American Horror Story. Now the lights that you see here to the left on the screen are in sound active mode. And they're going to do their own thing. And I'm sending sound um, beats information from Virtual DJ to my lighting software um, through that art net, through the network, um, you know, as it would be from the router. Currently, my Virtual DJ soft, my Virtual DJ laptop or my DJ laptop is connected to my home router, which is out in our living room, and my lighting laptop here, uh, here. This yellow cord is connected to a network switch that's sitting above me here on the desk. Um, so the two laptops are talking to each other. And the laptop that you see the, the lighting screen here on, the one that the mouse moving, is uh, the computer that I'm streaming from, which will classify that as being our ArtNet DMX dongle you know, our ArtNet unit. So the, the three laptop or the two laptops and this computer are all talking back and forth to each other and telling each other what to do. So here we go. Um, and you're going to be watching these little cans. Um, hopefully you guys can see the mouse moving there. The cans going around what would be the uplighting of this room. So this is a 3D rendering of what my rig would look like 
have all had you know this is a 3d render of what the rig would look like if i were to go set up all the equipment set up all of the lighting so just keep that in mind and this is a great tool um and i haven't really talked about this but this is a great tool for for you guys to program lighting so you can set up your lighting rig in this virtual 3d reality and and it is a little limited there are some things that you can't do very well with it um, you can't display you know uh, led panels very well you can't display some of the new lighting hasn't been uh, produced in this in this program yet so there are some things that are a little limited you can't really visualize them correctly as as if they were um, actually in front of you but it gives you a great opportunity to program your lighting without actually having to go set up your entire light rig and have somewhere to put it to program it but so let's get this started So as you can see, these lights are in sound active. And here in just a second, you're gonna see the up lights light up and go on beat. Now I'm not doing anything else. I'm not doing anything else to this. This, the DJ software is controlling the entire light show at this point. Now that was the end of it. It wasn't very long, but we'll go back. I didn't program very much, but so I'm not controlling that. That the DJ software is, is sending that code to my lighting software and the lighting computer is doing all of the work on its own. So that's the power of what this this type of setup can do and what sound switch does. That's how it works. It's it you program the song and away you go. Um so now we're gonna we're gonna switch softwares here. Then we're gonna go to um, the lighting software that I actually use. Well, let's take a look. We're gonna take a look at um, my DMX. My DMX is the software from American DJ. Now I'm I'm limited as to what I can show you with this because I don't have the my DMX interface. I don't have their dongle. So you have a virtual uh, control panel down here on the, gr on, the, on the bottom that allows you to scroll through all of your lighting fixtures. And again, I, I'm not super familiar with this. I downloaded it basically for this tutorial to show you guys the software. Um, I need to get a little bit more knowledge on how to operate this software and what I can and can't do with it with not having their interface. But from my understanding, it does, uh, it allows you to do uh, one DMX universe. Um, it might allow you to do more. Their website is not real clear on whether or not you can do multiple DMX universes with it. Um, and uh, by the way, Freestyler's uh, DMX universe capacity is two. You can do two DMX universes with Freestyler. So it's pretty basic. It is free. Um, and it uses, um, I believe, up to 15 different uh, interface dongles or uh, connection points from the laptop to your lighting, and you can get, you know, any one of them. There, you know, there's a big list on their website. What one you pick is up to you. Um, I will tell you that most of them are a third of the cost of Chavez. So if cost and budget is an issue for you, Freestyler is a good option. It's a little bit basic. There's some things that it doesn't do very well. Its um, generator is marginal at best. It does not have the best generator. Um, not nearly as com as uh, not nearly as easy to use as Show Expresses. But and apparently this one is, is fairly easy to use. Um, I have watched a few videos on it on YouTube. I haven't really dived into it much yet. Um, again, it's a software that I'm not super familiar with and I don't have their interface, which makes the software a little bit limited. You can download all of these softwares for free and try them out. Um, Show Express, QLC Plus is free. Um, Freestyler is free. Uh, Show Express is 
uh, software is free for the trial, but you need the interface to make anything work. Um, CompuShow, which is one of the other ones we're going to look at, is again, it's a free software. You can get on it and try it, but you need the interface to make it work. QLC is a free program and works with a couple of different interfaces. It's a, a u universal interface program like Freestyler. Now, the interface that I picked, the ArtNet unit that I have, was $100 on eBay. Um, I believe it came out of Dubai or um, India there somewhere. Um, but it has six US or six DMX universes, and it gives me a lot of expansion and a lot of capacity for new fixtures in the future. By far, um, more unit or by far a bigger unit than um, Show Express even is ca capable of. Um, now, Show Express does have. Um, the ability to do six DMX universes. I'm not sure if you need a dongle or an interface unit for each universe or exactly how that works. Um, I haven't gotten that far into looking at it, but yeah, that's the way to go. And just an FYI, if I needed more with the router in here, I have six ports on the back of that router. It's a four port router. I could connect four more ArtNet devices to that router and have up to 24 DMX universes if I needed them for almost the same cost as the Show Express unit. So, that's how that's how this is this is works. I mean, this is when you buy um, manufacturer-specific software, you need manufacturer-specific hardware, and usually that means it's expensive. Um, I'm not knocking Chave. I, I like a lot of their products. I just think s their software is a little bit overpriced for what you get. Um, and so we'll take a look at Show Express. It's going to take it a few minutes here to load up. Now, the, one of the, the nice features about Show Express is you can do a lot of custom buttons and commands. And you can see here there's a lot of buttons there that I've had that I was tinkering with and coloring, and you can put images on them. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with Show Express. Again, I can't really show you a lot because I need the interface in order to make the visualizers work, and I don't have the interface. So it's basically just a here's Show Express, here's what it looks like. Here's a few of the things you can do with it. If you want to find out more information, YouTube is probably um, a great place to, to get more information on Show Express. I probably won't be doing much more with it other than just what we did. Um, CompuShow is another one that's a uh, big lighting software. This is produced by Alation. Now, one of the things that CompuShow does that um, Freestyler doesn't do very well is that is integrate with MIDI control. Um, you can do it with Freestyler, but it's really clunky and not very good. It, it just really struggles with it. Um, CompuShow allows you to do multiple pages, as you can see down here along the bottom. And it's a little fuzzy, I know, guys. Um, let me see if I can make that any bigger for you. Uh, lighting laptop. There we go. Haha, -ha, look at that. Um, so, what you do is when you program in your lights, it makes these pages for you and then gives you com or control of each of your lighting fixtures and, and some of the features that they can do. And uh, with a MIDI interface, you can scroll back and forth between the pages and set up buttons and commands and, and make things do things. Um, on different pages per these, you know, per the setup that you're running. And again, this is another one of those I can't really show you a ton because I don't have an interface for it. So we'll close out of that one. And then we're going to go to QLC. Plus. And this is the lighting software that I use, and you'll see why here in a minute. Now, 
hopefully everybody's behaving. So in this, I've got all kinds of control and all kinds of commands. So I can, the first few things that you'll notice is along the top side of the screen here is our page bars. So I can set up multiple pages with all of my lights. Each light could have its own specific page if I wanted to. It's, it's crazy the amount of control that you can do in this. And the fact that I like the GUI or the, um, the editor, the API in this is just awesome. Uh, Ian, I don't know what model the ArtNet is, but if you search for um, ArtNet, uh, I think it's like an E1, ArtNet E1 or something on um, eBay, it should be the first thing that pops up. It's a six universe ArtNet unit. Um, so now what you can do is you can build buttons for just about anything. If you can program the light, you can program a button. Um, and the way that works is you know, I set up functions and scenes for my lights. Um, so let's switch to my lighting control. Here we go, my lighting computer. So I, I build a scene for the light and then I program that button to make that scene react. And then I also program that button to correspond to, uh, we'll go to the quad screen, to correspond to the um, APC Mini controller that I have. Now I believe, now th and don't quote me on this because I haven't verified it, but I believe you can run multiple APC Mini or multiple uh, MIDI control boards to control your, your lighting software. Again, don't quote me on this, but I believe that that's the case. So if I go up here and I go to my button and I push it and it doesn't do anything with that. Ah, there it goes. Why? What is that? That's the towers. Why is the truck? Oh, wait, I know why. Because they're not on. That would help. All right, so there we go. <laughs> all right, so the way I've got this thing set up is I can control all of my colors for all of my different zones of my lighting rig. So if I want to control up lighting, up lighting. And I can go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, cyan, magenta, pink, white, whatever I want to do, boom, 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 with a push of a button. Pretty, pretty cool. Now I want to do uh, my DJ booth. Boom, red DJ booth. Orange, yellow, green, blue, cyan, pink. Now you can see that the buttons are lit up and they correspond to what's lit up on the screen. They blink based on where I'm at on my control software. So I can see what's going on. So we'll do trussing, go trussing in blue, go DJ towers in blue, we'll do the DJ scans in green, yeah, we'll do the DJ scans in green, do the uplighting in red, why not, and then we'll do the mini spots in yellow, uh, orange, no, how about white? White's easy to find. All right, so we've got all of our lights programmed, all the buttons are working and doing things. Ooh, what about the sliders down here? We've got nine sliders on this control pad. Well, glad you asked. I can control the pan and tilt of my light fixtures with the sliders. So I can do individual lights or I can do groupings. And then I can do, oh, look different sets. Now I've got these programmed so that all four lights move in, syn in uh, synchronization with each other, but you can kind of see what the power and capability of this is. 
So what you can do is literally set this up so that the arrow buttons here are your page controls. You can scroll to a page, find the grouping of lights that you want, use all nine sliders if you wanted to, to do per fixture or per grouping of lights, but you can have finite control of all your lights, program that scene in, and then recall it with a button. So that's, I mean, it, it's just the way you can control lighting with these kinds of softwares is just astronomically way better than putting them in sound active mode or putting them in IR mode. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I know we're getting close here to our time. So that's uh, a little demonstration. We're going to do um, future episodes. I'm going to show you guys how to um, configure a fixture. So all of these softwares that I've showed you today have fixture libraries that come with them preloaded. Somebody's sat down and developed the fixtures. And the communities around each of those software packages develops fixtures for that software. Um, and we're going to talk about in the next episode how to build your own if that if your fixture isn't in the software I'm going to walk you through how to build a fixture um, And then we're going to go into in future episodes We're going to go into how to actually put this together to how to make your screen your light show um, There we go look like this we're going to I'm going to show you how to set up your scenes how to set up programs how to set up chases and effects and to make things do things in your program um, and the other thing so if we come over here and I click on moving programs one in the back there if you can see it those DJ scanners are moving to a program that I set up. So when I activate that light, that that command on that button, that that scene starts playing and moves those lights around in a specific pattern. Now I can do the same thing with the mini spots. So we'll go mini spots. Um, we'll go back to red. So the mini spots now are moving to a specific pattern of programmed in. And I have six different patterns of those mini spots can do. Six different programs that I've programmed the different, um, I don't know exactly what you want to refer to it as, but uh, In all the description of all the components you use, please and thanks. Uh, in the uh, in the description of the video currently streaming on YouTube, I believe there should be the descriptions of all the software um, and how it's all connected together. The only thing that's not in there is the ArtNet unit. Um, to be honest with you, if you just eBay um, search for ArtNet or even I believe Amazon ArtNet to DMX. Um, you should be able to find it, and I believe any controller will work. I don't think it needs to be anything specific. So basically, any ArtNet controller that you search for should should work. Um, the one that I happen to pick just happens to be a six universe ArtNet controller, um, and it is it is not. Um, the one that I use is more of a circuit board unit. It's not a polished unit. Um, so if we come back, uh, let me switch back here to my um, computer screen so that you guys can see me. Ah, here we go. Um, try to pull this up out of here a little bit so you can see it. I actually installed it into a plastic enclosure and put the... DMX um, interface, the XLR connectors into the plastic enclosure and wired them all together. Um, that was something I did custom other than the controller. And we've got MJ trying to Skype in with me here, but uh, for whatever reason, my Skype is engaging and I don't know why. But anyway, guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, 
I did state in the bottom of the description that if you guys want help doing DMX lighting, if you guys are interested in anything that I'm, I'm doing or need help programming your own DMX lighting, um, I am going to do uh, some one-on-one uh, -on -one DMX lighting. Now, there is an additional fee for that, but uh, it's a great opportunity for you guys to get um, some help if you need it. Um, again, this is great software. Um, the, the QLC Plus, I really do like it a lot. And like I said, um, here in the very near future, hopefully um, I'll get with the uh, developer that's working on the virtual DJ interface and we'll be able to send lighting code from virtual DJ to QLC to program lighting on the fly in the songs every time perfectly. It'll be really exciting and I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, potentially if if he doesn't hurry up and get on the ball, I might try to develop it on my own. We'll see how that goes. I'm not very familiar with uh, C++ or any of the programming languages, so I'll have to learn all of that stuff. But uh, Anyway, guys, uh, again, I'm DJ Michael Chilson. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, we're hoping, I'm hoping to do um, some more lighting stuff, some audio stuff, um, potentially get into rigging down the road. Um, I just relocated across the country, and all of my equipment, all of my DJing equipment, other than the few things that you see here, are still back where I used to live. Um, so at some point, that all has got to come to me here but so for now we're going to do what we can in the studio and then once we get all the lighting equipment back um, get all the lighting equipment here to where I am we'll do some stuff um, live down in the garage maybe or uh, figure something out but uh, again guys I hope you appreciate it be sure to like share and subscribe and uh, Hopefully we'll see you guys again on the next episode where we talk about building lighting fixtures and in future episodes where we talk about doing lighting scenes and controlling all of your lights now that you have software and an interface that works. Again, guys, take care, and I'll see you next time.